Jessie Draper, the Valley Girl. Valley Girl. What does your company do? Have you ever Googled yourself? Totally. What makes a great entrepreneur? What's your next big idea? Tweeting's like my favorite. Let's talk business. I'm like the Valley Girl. Mark Cuban is a business mogul, investor, author, and all-around badass. He owns the Dallas Mavericks basketball team, Landmark Theaters, and Magnolia Pictures, is the chairman of HDNet, he's also appeared on the TV series Entourage, Dancing with the Stars, and is currently an investor on ABC's Shark Tank. Well, here we are with Mark Cuban. So how are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So how do you like being here in San Francisco? You know, I don't know why I pointed out there, but it is out well, there. Well, because you have a sign right there, yes. right? It's, it's just amazing, just phenomenal, phenomenal, just incredible. But you were telling me that you you don't always come to the Silicon Valley. No, I hate coming no. to the Valley. It's just the it's pretentious, it's conceited, it's its own little world, and you know I'd rather it's its own little lost world, you know, where they try to create and do things. And I'd rather just let them keep it. I find that uh, that very interesting because. You know, you are a really big investor, mm -hmm. and um, you, I do, I feel like there's so many great companies to invest in here. Do you just make them all come to Dallas? No, no, <laughs> actually, it, it's, there are a lot of great companies to invest here, and what's happened is that the Valley, San Francisco, the whole area has created its own little bubble world, right? Right. You're, you're, you're the, you know, the 2012 version of the bubble boy when it comes to <laughs> investing, right? You just create your own little bubble. And then I try to go after the nine zillion companies outside of the Valley, Valley because okay. the valuations are completely different. The expectations are completely different. The um, commitment to the companies is completely different. It's not, you know, companies here are very transient. You, right. you you know they're very they're big home run swingers and, and yeah. everybody wants to be Barry Bonds and just swing for the fences and if you strike out well then you immediately instead of waiting for the next pitch you just go to the next company. I love that you're making sports analogies with investing. I love it because you you know you are clearly so passionate about sports. Is that your passion? No, I mean I like sports. I mean I love sports, yeah. but I love a lot of things. It's just you know. I'm just I'm just the, the luckiest guy in the world, right? I just I just do what I like, and and so you know sports and basketball in particular is one of those things. But you know I I think it comes more down to just being competitive. I just love to compete, and and business is the ultimate sport. I mean it's the one sport that's 24 by 7 by 365 by forever. And you know playing basketball, owning a team, you know working out whatever is all great, but. You know, the competing in business to me is, is the most fun. I like that oh. you're saying it's like a competition. Like it's a, it is a, it is a it competition. Is a competition. And I'm gonna kick your ass. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna start the Blue Texas Boy Show, and we're gonna just crush you. <laughs> what Trigger. was your sort of first entrepreneurial experience? I mean, I remember repackaging baseball cards when I was a little kid um, oh. and selling them to to my friends. Um, I sold garbage bags door to door. Um, I, I just I've always been doing something for myself, and I think, I think my dad was always really has always been really big on self reliance. If you want something, you figure out a way to earn it. And you know, at first, and, and typically, it's like go get a job. It's like you're 10 years old, 12 years old. What kind of job are you going to get? And what it did just, your dad do? He was he did upholstery on cars. So okay. Um, or seats. So like it's, this kind of thing. Yeah. So if it had a rip, then you would take it to my dad, and he worked for a company called Regency Products, and okay. that's what he did until we retired. Awesome. And um, so awesome wasn't always a word I connected with. Oh, but. okay. What should we say? Tubular. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, so let's talk about you know um, some of your bigger investments: HDNet, right? Um, Landmark Theaters, right. Magnolia. Right. So how are they doing? What's going on? They're all doing really well. They're all making money. The only the only business. High five. That, yeah. There you go. Nice. The only business that I have that's not making money that I run basically is the Mavericks. Okay. And and hopefully that'll change at some point in time. But I'm. You know, it's um, it's more important for me to win, um, right, right, than than anything else. But you know, Landmark um, does really, really well. Um, we've we've got a unique space that we're in. We try to do things a little bit differently. Um, yeah, it's really in the indie. Yeah, really into indie theater. films and more personalization. Um, Magnolia Films. We just completely redid how films are distributed. Um, most dis distribution companies lose money on more than half of the movies they distribute. We rarely if ever lose money in a movie we distribute and what that came down to was about six years ago um, I was sitting um, just 
you know, I like, like I said, I'm competitive, right? Right, and right. And if, if I want to try to th change things, I always look at it and say, okay, if I want to f up this business, what would I do? <laughs> Seriously, that, you know, if, if I were just coming in fresh and looking like at it with- That's the opposite perspective, I think, of a lot of investors. It's really smart, though. Well, yeah, I mean, look, if everybody's doing one thing, then that's not what I want to do. Right. Right, and that's kind of the herd mentality here in Silicon Valley. Instagram, I got to, it's better than Can Instagram. Can you believe that? Yeah. Instagram, a billion dollars? You know, it used to be, you paid per visitor, now you pay per per daily active user. What do you, you think know? was the main, why do you think they did that? You buy Instagram, you kill Shutterfly. You know, mm -hmm. you you know, you look for ways that you can pick a Trojan horse. And how abuse. do you destroy the business, as you uh, yeah, say? How do you f*** it up? Yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, that's what I tried to do with Magnolia. I said, okay, looking at the distribution business, what what viewpoints did I have? do I have that are gonna be different than probably everybody else? Right, right. And so, I. You know, because of HDNet and being the first out in high def, I'd look at, every, everybody always looks at the internet now as being the ultimate destination, the right. ultimate digital, digital enabling. When in reality, the internet, particularly for video, is designed for everything but video, right? But then you look at what's happening with cable and it's getting away from analog. You know, AT&T and Verizon have gotten away from analog. Satellite has always been all digital, but they're all going all digital. Right. So I said, of all these alternative digital platforms, that are designed for video, what is it that's going to be happening going forward that I can take advantage of? Well, the big opportunity was transactional VOD, subscription VOD. So what we said with Magnolia was the, the, the highest risk capital in the distribution of a movie is in what they call P&A, the promotions and advertising, right, right. prints and advertising, yeah. right? And you almost always lose your money there now. And so I said, why don't we get away from that business of spending a boatload of money and just throwing it in theaters and praying it, it draws bodies? Mm -hmm. Why don't we put it onto transactional VOD before it's in theaters? Right. Because we can do it because so we own landmark, the own landmark theaters. We have access to cable because of HDNet. So we started putting it on a month before it was in theaters. And it's killing it. You know, we awesome. have a movie out, Goon, and it's on iTunes, it's on Comcast VOD, it's on AT&T. So you, you're making these movies too? Well, well we make sort some. Of. Like we just did Tim okay. and Eric's billion dollar movie, okay. but we only make movies that we have pre-funded. So right, we've already right. sold the rights. But more often than not, we're just going out and buying other people's movies and right. putting it through our process. But it's great because, because we're doing it through the VOD approach or pre-theatrical approach, digital approach, the money's coming in a lot quicker. There's no money out. You know, PNA is limited, and they're all making money. That was very. So that's that's how you work. You, that, you're just you're like a future it. thinker. What what what's going to happen to me in the future? <laughs> Why does the word tubular come to mind? <laughs> what is the next industry that you want to invest in? I don't look for specific industries. Um, I just look for unique opportunities. That's um, great. You know, I, again, I look for places that we can disrupt. Um, I've got a company here in San Francisco called Motion Lock, okay. and they came to me actually and said, we're building these little sensors that we can put anywhere um, that automatically connect to a cellular network that count everything in front of them so that we'll know exactly how many people, bikes or cars, are going in front of these sensors in real time wow. and we can count. And so, you know, in the leasing business as an example, if you own commercial real estate, you really don't know how many cars drive by, how That's many true. people walk by, how many people bike by. So they by, make these little sensors? Put on the side of a building and they just count. And if you want to lease a commercial real estate location, um, here's what you can tell your client that this is the number of units, whereas your competitors don't have this information yet. Right. They will when they realize you have and they buy it from us. I've got another business about three years ago I wrote a blog post called the, the Mark Cuban Your blogs are source, great, by yeah. the way. They're really great. Well, I, appreciate really, that. I like them. I mean I think it's I think it's really great that you blog too. And you that, put fun. Out, you, yeah. you've learned so much I'm sure and it's just really I think nice for, you know, entrepreneurs and things to go read. Well, I mean, originally I did it to combat media because right. media, you know, back in 2004 when I started, media had all the leverage. And it started from an interview I did about the Mavs, and it was an email interview, and they just picked and cho chose what they wanted to put right. in the interview. And so then I created the blog, and I put the whole email thread up there oh, so people could see here's what they wrote, here's what the exchange yeah. was. But that's um, great. you're talking about uh, other opportunities. So I created, I put up a blog post saying that if, um, you have a good idea, as long as you think it could be profitable. I don't want these far-fetched, long-term ideas. Within the next um, 90 days, I think I said, I'll invest, right? All you gotta do is, it's my open source funding oh, opportunity. Oh, and great. so one of the people that invested was a single um, location 
pizza chain, pizza chain, pizza oh, location, naked, naked pizza? pizza. Yeah. So I, I was looking at your tweets and your. Yeah, I, I've been, I saw I've like, been pushing them hard <laughs> lately. Been, and I was like, uh, it, it said, "I am naked at Naked Pizza." Is that true? You were naked? Totally. <laughs> I was as tubular as I could possibly get. <laughs> But, uh, but see, I, I gave $30,000 to these guys, and it was a great idea. But they were in, more interested in being big shots and, you know, how many how many stores can we get open, and they screwed it up. So within the past three weeks, I've had to take it back over. Oh, so wow. it's been my complete focus. So I've stepped back in, and, you're, and, and I'm taking it over. You're remolding. And, and I'm getting naked with naked pizza. You're getting naked with naked pizza. You get pitched all the time. Like Continuously. Daily. Yeah. Where is the weirdest place you've been pitched? Oh, <laughs> That's it. My my, I was tubular. My hands were full, and it's like, hey, you're Mark. Um, I got an idea. I'm like, I'm busy. Your head's supposed to be down. <laughs> I get pitched everywhere. <laughs> oh my goodness. I get pitched everywhere. Just all over the place. I mean, I literally have invested four million, maybe more now, in people I've never met. Via email, like someone sent yeah. you an email. You're yeah. like, great idea. Here's some money. Well, no, it's like, okay, here's my questions. Okay. And I just start banging on you, banging on you with questions. And if depending on how you answer them, then I'm like, okay, here's my due diligence form. Go through it, you know, then give me your numbers and we'll fight about valuation. And if you're in, if you're in the Valley, we're probably not going to do a deal because <laughs> your idea of valuation is we start at 10 million because I'm in the Valley and I'm smart. So if you just want to send me an email, if I like the idea, I'll respond. And, you know, there's a good chance I'll invest if I like it. That's great. Um, you know, I heard this very funny thing about you. Did you buy your jet online? online? Yeah. That is so funny. Yeah. And you, so you're in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah, which is very cool. Online which is very purchase. cool. Did they even have that set up online when you did that? Uh, no, it was via email. It wasn't like an online order. It was via email. <laughs> and so um, I emailed a guy saying, hey, I'm interested in a G5, um, which had just come out. And he's like, cool. And I'm like, I've got a pilot already picked out. Can he test fly it? And he, he, the guy's like, yeah, we'll set it all up. Took the Amazing. test flight, done, wired the money. It was mine. That's so cool. Yeah, it was very That's cool. It's just really cool. Yeah, it feels really good to be able to do that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you were you were on your jet last night, right? Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. you were like emailing me from the jet. Yes. I love it. So what do you, what's your jet like? What do you, what do you do on your jet? I can't sleep on a plane very well. So I, I typically, um, I'll just work. You yeah. know, and if there's a movie or something or one of our movies that I haven't seen, I'll put it on, I'll watch the movie and just try to get some work done. You know, it's just because I'm, I'm not big on meetings and I'm certainly not big on phone calls. Right. To me, it's just not there's time. There's 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 just time and place for it. Totally. If, if I'm going to close the deal, if you're going to write me a check. Yeah. How do you manage all of your time? Because you have so many investments. And I know, you know, when you invest in something and you're running a company, let alone you're running a company. It's just, it's so important to be hands-on and care. Like you're saying, you had to get involved with these naked pizza guys. Like, right. how do you manage your time? You're involved in so many things. Well, I, I micromanage you until I trust you. And so once I trust you, you're on your own. So like the Mavericks run themselves until, unless there's a trade or um, unless it's free agent period, right? Right, right. So that's easy. Landmark, um, Magnolia, they've all got it down. So it doesn't take, takes no time at all. Um, and then from there, the way I work, you just send me a report every Friday via email. That's good. And if you have questions, you just email me and I'll get you right back to you. Um, and because I do it via email, I've got a lot of bandwidth. Right. If I had to get on the phone all the time and I had to do meetings all the time, I'd be crushed. There's just no way. Now, I want to talk about Shark Tank. Sure. Okay. And you guys, are are you going to get picked up for another season? I hope so. I hope you know? so too. It is a great show. It really is, And isn't you're it? fantastic on it. Thank you. Do you find, um, have you found some deals that you just loved from there? Oh yeah, um, and actually, all but one um, has done really, really well. We've got these guys that from Utah Valley Community College that came up with kiss sticks, which are lip balm. Oh yeah. That yeah. when you kiss, they 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 were chemists, and so they put some chemicals in there so that when you kiss, it either creates a new flavor from the two of them mixing <laughs> together, or it like creates a, a reaction so you really, really feel it. You know, so, you, so it's like so it got, if you want to make sure you make sure kiss the sticks. kiss sticks, but if you want to make sure you have chemistry with somebody, at least they think you do, <laughs> even if you kind of rigged it, you, you buy some kiss sticks. Do you consider yourself a shark on Shark Tank? Yeah, versus the other four people on the panel, absolutely. I love to kick their ass. What Would you consider yourself a shark if you were an animal? No, <laughs> a shark. No. What animal just would never, you be? Well, I guess in some respects, because we never stop, right? I'm, I'm just somebody who never stops. And I guess, what animal would I be? I don't know. <laughs>
I want to talk a little about the Mavericks. How are okay. they doing right now? Are you happy with them? Let's just put it this way. If you have to ask how we're doing, it's probably not a good idea. No, I know how you're doing. Mavericks. I mean, I heard, you know, and I heard this thing with Lamar, which I wanted to talk a little sure. about. So he's, so he's, he, gone. he's out. He's gone. He's out. He's in the big reality you know, show in I the mean, sky. Yeah, I was watching him on, on you know, Chloe Lamar, and Lamar, Chloe and Lamar, and he, he seemed a little depressed. He seemed depressed in Dallas. You don't I'm want probably, a guy who's depressed. I probably should have watched the show first. <laughs> 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 I've never seen the show. I, I didn't want it to cloud my judgment. I probably should have. But, um, but uh, so, okay, and I heard that you're just a very, you know, it sounds like you're very hands-on with all of your companies, but it sounds like you're very, you know, you're very hands-on on the court. I've heard you've had, you, you have a little trouble staying in your seat. Yeah, but I'm just a fan. Yeah, you know? you're just a fan. I just happen to have a big investment in, in this particular team. Well, but, I um, had a suggestion for you. Okay. To help you. Okay. 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 Are you ready? Does that feel good? Does that help? Can a I little? tell? Never mind. I'm not going to get there. <laughs> give one piece of advice to a new entrepreneur, having had all of the entrepreneurial experience you've had, what would it be? Follow your effort, not your passion. Follow your effort, what do you mean by that? Most people think, you know, they get, they have an idea and they get all excited about it. Right, right. And then they, they talk to their friends and it's the world's best idea. Right. right. My friends think so, you know, his or her friends whose dad works somewhere thought it was a great idea. Right. It must be a great idea. And then they think it's all about the idea. Um, they don't do the work to, to determine what's good about it, what the market is, da 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 da. What 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 I've learned is that people, if you really want to be successful at something, right. you'll find that you'll put the time in. That you won't just ask somebody if it's a good idea. You'll go figure out if it's a good idea. You'll figure out what the elements are that are required to make it successful. You'll do the work. Yeah. You know. Um, Every, you know, Bobby Knight, um, the, old, the basketball coach from Indiana where I went to school, used to say everybody's got the will to win, but it's only those with the will to prepare that do win. And if you find yourself putting in the time, if you find yourself being prepared, you know, then there's a good chance that you can make something of it. If you find yourself just talking about you know, the idea and just pitching the idea and looking for somebody else, looking to somebody else for help with the idea. Right you're probably not going to make it work. Well, you are fantastic. This was so nice. Thank you so, so much for doing it's this over. interview. I'm like the Valley Girl. I'm like Mark Cuban. You even had a little inflection in that. It's yeah, that's good. what Valley Girls do, right? And now it's time for your dits moment. <laughs> okay, so if you have had all... You start a question without saying okay? Yes. I'll do it. Are you ready? Oh, 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 oh,